Can I share something with you? If you don't get it right here, you are going back to school in heaven. I'm serious. Everybody, you refuse to go to school, or you refuse to learn a trade, or you refuse to learn the simple thing you have been told to learn here on the earth. You refuse. When you go to heaven, you're going to learn it by force. Even if it takes you a billion years, you're going to get it. Going to get it right. Especially if you are born again. So being born again is not enough. Then you relax. So I see all these churches in history. I, I began to go through each church. One after another. The Nazarenes. The Methodists. The AME. The AME Zion. The AME that. Apostolic this. Apostolic. I began to look at them through history. How those churches came about. Majority of contemporary churches outside the Reformation and Counter-Reformation era began to be born because the wind blew on them. The wind blew. Why did the wind blow? Because somebody on the earth in those organizations ask for the wind. Ask. You see, the reason why the wind is coming is because we've been asking for the new rain. See, they've talk, they been talking about the later rain. They've been talking about the coming rain. They did it. All that, all that, all that uh, grammar is simply this. It is about the coming wind we are talking about. It's not a rain. It is a wind. The wind is coming. And when the wind comes, then a new church or a new movement is born. Remember, at the beginning of this Congress, we said it begins, it, it, it creates a new beginning and removes an old one. And that's what God says he is beginning to do. Because the cry of the church is going up. Few people in the churches. It's not about a renewal. People of God, listen to me carefully. There are people who are praying for a revival. I am not praying for a revival. I am not praying for renewal. What I'm praying about is the coming of this new wind in a different way. So many people are praying for God to bring revival. So many prophets are out there talking about revival. But that's not what God is telling me. God is saying it's about the blowing through the earth of a new wind. And that until the new wind comes, even the revival you're looking for, you won't find it. Many, many ministries and churches are born out of deep desire for God, holiness for God. I'm not talking of churches that are born out of one little silly thing, one little thing. You disagree with the other church about whether women should wear pants or trousers or whether they should put eyeshadow or lipstick or earrings, or gold chains, you disagree on those things, and you go and start your own. No, that's not the reason to even start church. Those things are not the reason to start church. Or you disagree over whether people should be baptized, uh, you should take people to the ocean, anybody who is baptized in the ocean, is that the real baptism? Or you baptize them in the sea, that's the real baptism? Or you baptize them in the river, that's the real baptism. Or whether you should baptize people by taking water in a small bowl and you scoop the water and pour it on somebody's head. Or you sprinkle people with it. See, people disagree on those things. And they go and start a church on those. That's not the reason to start a church. Because the wind did not blow. It was you that blew hot air out of quarrel. And you went and started something. So when hot A 
an exchange of feasts, fight happened. And then you guys went out to go and start your own. God is not part of that thing. That's why <laughs> when, when a church, a group break out, beat up their elderly, pass their people, cast them out, broke away, didn't want to make peace with them, and then and then came to insult Edekai Mary, and Edekai Mary added some big, big cost to their problems, and they thought it's all right. And then later I hear, after I've gone out from that place as their pastor, later I hear that everything has scattered. They are fighting among themselves and killing themselves. The curse of Edekai Mary come back to them and destroy them. And today, few people remain in that place. The thing that when I was there, it used to be packed. And they thought they were smart. I mean, this is a church that I was begging them to go and make peace with their parents. And they fought me just for telling them that they need to make peace with the people across the street where they, where they fought and broke away. Because I know the consequences of beating up your parents. I know it. And they didn't listen. They thought I was the enemy. Why? I saw that it was not the wind that established that group. The group I was posted to shepherd was not established by the wind. I knew it. The first one I was sent to in old town, the wind wasn't there. It was full of old people. There were very few young people. And I was a young man in old town. <laughs> That's why many marriages, many, many marriages, if the wind has not yet blown over it, don't go into it. Because you are going into uncharted territory. No matter how good everybody is with you, how nice they are towards you, please do not go. Wait for the wind to blow. You want to start a business? Wait for the wind to pass through it, to go over it. Because that is the secret of success and achievement and power is when the wind blow and move over it. Hallelujah. Nobody want to offer you a job in your city. Wait for the wind to blow. Tell the wind to come to the city on your behalf and blow over the city. And tell the wind to carry you. Yes. Then the job will be created. When the wind blow over your city, let me tell you what happened to uh, Christine Christine, my friend, had a, I had a very, very good friend. She's still my friend. I mean, I've not heard from her for a while. I'm always falling in love with people from Michigan. I have no idea. I have no idea. If they are not from Michigan, they are from the Bahamas. God have mercy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Caribbean people love love this pastor African Americans they love this pastor Europeans white from every continent you can think of they love this man Spanish people who are with their son Asians, Asians are trying now to, to push me forward. They love me, and I love them too. Geneva, Miss Geneva, are you there? She's not there. We love me too. <laughs> Okay. 
I watch through history as people fight over little things. For example, don't speak in tongues during church service. Don't prophesy. They quarrel over how to lay hand. They quarrel over how to they quarrel over uh, how to how to anoint people with, with oil. They quarrel over how to heal everything. And because of it, they go and start a church. The wind did not blow. Where the wind did not blow, why do you want to go there? And the reason why God sent the wind to go to the upper room where the disciples were was because he knew that that was the secret of starting a church. That was the secret of the church. The church can only be the church when the wind passes through it. Without the wind passing into them and passing through it and taking over that territory, Nothing. There is no success. This is the wind of the Holy Ghost we are talking about here also. There are many sides to the wind. God really wants to expose this. There are many sides to the wind. This is the wind of Pentecost. People of God, what we need it's not a revival. What we need is a new Pentecost, that says your God. God gave me this prophecy to tell you that the new Pentecost is coming. Prepare your sons and daughters for the new Pentecost. How? Prepare people so that when the wind comes, the wind will stay. Because the problem of the church has been when the wind comes, the wind doesn't stay. The wind comes, stay for a while, and then lift up slowly and goes. And leave them with politics, with money, and with struggle for power. Two things kills anything God wants to start. Two things does. Number one. The quarrel for a position of power among humans. Number two, the quarrel for who controls the money and take more of it. That's what crumbles and send the wind away. That's why a lot of people they started with the wind and they ended up with nothing. I mean, they have the money, they have the jets, but the power is gone. They don't have the power anymore. It's gone. The authority behind their business, their ministries, their marriage, their family is gone. You ask your husband, let's pray for your wife. Let's pray, let's fast today. Let's spend the whole day just being in the presence of Jesus and worshiping. He said, who is doing that kind of thing? We need to do it when we started. We don't have time for all that nonsense anymore. Maybe we need to pursue, you need to get, the, get to the plane and travel and let's go and take care of that business here and there. And slowly, you'll be doing your own thing because when the wind goes, you'll be doing your own thing. When the wind departs from your life, you'll be doing your own thing. My cry tonight is, Oh Lord, do not take your wind from me. That's what David was crying about. You can take away everything I have, but do not take your spirit from me. Because there is no future without the wind. Please write that down. There is no future without the wind. There is none whatsoever. 
If the devil knows that really what you want is only money and material resources, he will even help to give it to you as far as he stops you from pursuing the wind or the wind from pursuing you. He will do it. Because he knows that that's naturally what human beings want. Human beings want to be in position of power over other human beings and they want the, they want the money and the material resources to back it up. The devil will give it to you. As far as you stop, he kills the other side of you that actually led you into the lifestyle of God. This is the wind of Pentecost you are talking about. Don't let it go. Don't, don't pursue the Holy Ghost. What I mean by not to pursue the Holy Ghost, I mean do not do something that makes him to be angry and vexed and go. You see, you can say something bad to Jesus. You can do something evil against Jesus. He will still stand there waiting for you to come back. But if you do things against the Holy Ghost, it's very quick to move away. I don't know why, but it's because... Uh, how do I put it? The Holy Spirit has the spirit and the lifestyle of a little child, an infant. The Holy Spirit is like that. He's easily, he's easily wounded. He's easily wounded. He, he doesn't trust easily. It takes a lot for him to love you. And to stay with you. That's why Jesus said you can do anything against him, Jesus, and against the Father. But if you do anything against the Holy Ghost, you will not be forgiven. Because let me share with you how this thing goes. Jesus and the Father take Jesus and the Father. Please, please, stop, 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 stop. Whoever is moving, stop. We are getting into something very important here. Okay, you're me to wrap it up for you. Okay, thank you.